In the only photo, Farmer John has N cows, standing in a line waiting to take photos. Each cow is going to have a breed, either Guernsey or Holstein, which we're now going to refer to as G or H. For any photo he takes, if there's any cow with only one type, for example, only one G or only one H, Farmer John is going to throw out the photo. We want to find the number of photos that he throws out. Let's go look at the algorithm for this question. In order to solve this question, we can first come up with an easier version to find the general idea of how to solve it. There are lots of different restrictions that this question poses. We can basically try and create a simpler version that gets rid of all of these restrictions except one. So let's assume we have a question that has the same thing where we want to throw away lonely cow photos, except we can have any number of cows in the photo. It has to start at one specific cow. So in this initial question, the question allows us to start anywhere, but we're going to restrict that range to starting at this cow and then ending anywhere. And then we're also only going to throw out any lonely cows for the G type. So now our question simplifies to, starting at a certain point, what range of sequences or photos from this point allow us to remove them because they are photos with one lonely cow of type G? And the way we can solve this question is, any photo that's going to be removed because of a type G cow is going to contain exactly one cow of type G. So our range is going to be from the first G cow, starting from our starting point, all the way up until the second G cow. Since if we have more values after this, let's say we have H, G, H, all of these photos from here and on are never going to be thrown out because of a breed G cow, because it already contains two cows making it no longer a lonely photo. So our photos are going to consist of the range between the first occurrence of a G cow and the second occurrence of a G cow. So that's going to be the basis that we create our program off of. And now when we go back to our original conditions, we can add them back in order to find our answer to this question. So for lonely cows of breed G and lonely cows of G, breed H, we can essentially do the same thing, except what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to get two ranges for the fo lonely photos. So one of the ranges is going to be for the H cows and one of them is going to be for the G cows. If we start again at our point here, our range, actually let's say we're still not including that condition, for the H breed cows are going to be between these two, since if I were to take any photo containing both of these cows, it would not be thrown out because of a lonely H cow. And then our range for the lonely G cows is going to be this one, since again, it's going to be between the first and the second occurrence of the G type cow. And then what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take the range that both of them encapsulate. And I'll explain this more in the code later. Now the next thing we need to do is get rid of this condition. So if we assume that we're going to take photos with at least three cows, basically what we're going to do is for our range, if we have a starting cow, we're just going to make sure that our starting and our ending cows are both going to encapsulate at least a range of a photo of size at least three. So whether it's a range like this or like this, as long as this range contains any photos with size at least three, then we're only going to include those photos of size at least three. And then also with our any range, what we're going to do is we're going to have an outer for loop that's going to loop through each cow. And then just like we did for this cow here, this pointer is going to be our starting cow. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create two lists, one for the h to the index and then another for the g to the index. So what that means is for every index here, for our starting cow, we're going to need to find the first occurrence of the g cow and then the second occurrence of the g cow. And then as we loop through our starting indexes, we're going to keep moving these two to the next occurrences of the g cow. So when we move our start here, then our two g cows are going to be here. When we move our start here, our two G cows are going to be here. 
when we move our start here, two decals are going to be here, all the way until we only have one decal left. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a reverse index list. So basically, if we give all of these their indexes in a list, we're going to create one that maths g to all of its indexes. So the first g is at index 0, then at index 2, then 3, then 6, and then for h, the first one is at 1, then 4, then 5. And then we're just going to keep a pointer here, and then a pointer here. And then as our starting index moves, as long as this pointer, the value at this point in the array, as long as this value is greater than or equal to our current index, then we can keep it there. So basically, if we have our starting pointer here, then we're going to keep one pointer here, one pointer here, and then so the next two occurrences of g's are going to be these two or these two. And then when we move our starting pointer, let's say we move this here, then once this one moves, we're also going to move our pointer here. So this is going to move here. And then we're going to move this one again. And then this bottom one is going to move. And this one is going to stay. So we're basically going to keep moving our two pointers so that the index that we're at is going to be to the right or the same as the starting index. And that way we can take a photo starting at this index and get the first two cows. So it'll just be like this and so on. We can start off our program by reading in our input. So we're going to read in our cows list and then split it into our two different breeds, H and G. And so for all of the H cows, we're going to add them to the H list. And then for all of the G cows, we're going to add them to the G list. Once we're done with that, we're going to start looping through. And so for the G list and the H list, we're going to keep one pointer for each, a G pointer for the G list, and then an H pointer for an H list. And we're also going to keep our overall answer. When we loop through, we're going to loop through all of the values up until n minus 2. And that's because Farmer John's minimum size of a photo is 3. So if I were to start a photo at index, say, n minus 1, then we can't actually take a photo because there aren't enough cows starting from that cow and on. So our starting cow for the photo is going to go from 0 to n minus 1 for the indexes. After that, we're going to increment our two pointers as needed. Over here, we're going to check to see whether or not our pointers are going to be the last element or over the size of a list. And if that happens, for example, let's say we have the end of our list be G, H, 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 H. In this case, the last occurring G is here, but there is no next occurring G. And so we're just going to add a couple ifs to see whether or not this is true. And in that case, we're just going to assign our second G to the size of the list, since you can take any photo up till the end and still have it be a lonely G photo. And then in the case where we have, for example, all H's, where there are no G's left, then our first G is also going to be the end. And in that case, you wouldn't be able to take any lonely photos if the lonely photo was for a G cal. So N minus N would just be equal to zero. So we have a range of zero and these two cancel out. Once we check for the G base cases, we're also going to check for the idea for H. So we're going to do the exact same code, but just switching out the G for H. Once that's done, we're going to assign our beginning and end of the ranges. Let's say we have two ranges where they overlap. For example, we have GH, GH. In this case, we're going to have two ranges, our G range where we have this, and then our H range where we have this. And for the overlapping H and G over here, what's going to happen is if we were to just take this range plus this range, we're going to overcount them. So to compensate for that, we're going to take the total range that either the G cow's lonely range or the H cow lonely range covers. So in order to do that, we're going to get the first and last value. So the absolute start and the absolute end, which is just going to find the smallest starting point and the greatest ending point. And so if we have something like this, then it's just going to go from start to end. And then the only thing we need to check for is if there's a gap where we have, for example, um, two lines where we have one of them is, for example, here, and then one of them is here, 
If we take the absolute end and then the absolute start, then this gap in the middle here, from here all the way to here, is going to be counted, but it's not going to be an answer. So we're just going to check that by subtracting the middle range, if that's true. Basically, you just look out for this small case. Otherwise, we're just going to add the absolute start and the absolute end. And then the other final condition we have to look out for is the minimum of three cows in one photo condition. And to combat this, we're just going to make sure that all of our values are the maximum of themselves or i plus two. Meaning if we have a range that's for example from i plus one to i plus four, then our minimum range that could actually be taken as a lonely photo is going to start at where there are three cows. Overall, we're just going to do the simple algorithm we mentioned earlier, and then there are a couple things to look out for, namely the end of this list, then at least three photos, and then finally, if we have a gap. Once we've covered all of these conditions, we can add these to our answer and then print it out in the end. And that's the end of our program.